This program is sponsored by the friends and partners of Tessitani Ministries. You too can be a part of it. God bless you. David knew that when he has the presence of God, he comes to the power of God. And when the power of God shows up, no enemy can Hallelujah. Welcome to Hour of Solution. This is your Hour of Solution. This is your moment of solution. You have come here today not to meet with me, not to hear me speak, but you have come to encounter the precious Lord Jesus. And I assure you that before you finish watching this program, you will have an encounter with the Lord, an encounter that will not cause you to remain the same, but an a counter that will propel you to the next level in destiny and a counter that will take your life to the place where God wants it to be and a counter that will take your business your career your health your marriage your finances your children to the next level in Christ that is the encounter that I pray for you to have before the end of this program my name is Tessitani and the spirit of the Lord is saying to you that you have come to the hour of your solution the solution that you have been seeking for in your health in your marriage in your finances in your career in your business in every area of your life in the lives of your children this very moment welcome to that place of rest that place of abundance that place of solution hallelujah i want to pray with you i want you to stretch forth your hands towards the screen if you are believing god for financial breakthrough if you are believing god for your health to be restored if you are sick in any part of your body i want you to stretch forth your hands towards the screen i always say on this platform that there may be a screen between me and you but remember that you are not here to meet with me. You are here to meet with the Almighty God, the one who is at everywhere at the same time, the one who is omnipresent. So there may be a screen between me and you, but there is no screen between you and God. The power of the Lord is going to touch you right where you are trusting Him to touch you now. I see the power of the Lord touching you and healing you now. I see the power of the Lord resting Restoring somebody's virtues, the virtues that the enemy's foundation of powers have stolen away from you. I see God restoring back your virtues. I see God restoring back your glory. I see God restoring back your finances. I just pray as you stretch forth your hands towards the screen. Father, I bring your people before you tonight. Lord, meet them in their personal lives. Meet them at their place of need. In the name of Jesus, for everyone trusting you for health oh lord everyone trusting you for healing let them receive the healing right now by the power and authority in the mighty name of jesus father everyone that is trusting you for a gainful employment i pray that your favor be upon their resumes their cvs let your favor be upon it let your favor be upon your name the job that they have applied for that they did not hear anything oh lord from the recruiters i join my faith with theirs and i pray now father that you have mercy on them let them encounter your favor let them experience your favor father let the recruiters pull out their foul and remember them for good in the name of jesus if you're struggling if your marriage is going through difficulties right now father i pray that for everyone watching me right now that is facing challenges in their marriage lord i pray that you breathe your fresh breath upon their marital bed and restore joy in their home restore peace in their marriage restore romance in their marriage let them love each other again unconditionally and every forces of darkness that is fighting your marriage let the power of god take care of them right now and pull them where they belong in 
the mighty name of Jesus. I pray for that sister that your marriage is blessed in the name of Jesus. No more tears. No more wetting your pillows in the middle of the night. I see God bringing peace to your marriage. Thank you, Father, for answered prayers. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. I want to take you through the scriptures today as the Spirit of the Lord ministers to you through me. So I want you to get ready. I want you to do away with every distractions right now and hear what the Spirit of the Lord has to say to you this moment. I want you to get out your notebook, get your Bible, get your pen. I want you to be very intentional every time you come to this program because I know that God is here and before you came, he was already waiting for you. Hallelujah. I always tell people that this is an appointment with God. It is a divine appointment with God. So come prepare to receive. Come intentional. Hallelujah. God has something great for you. Hallelujah. And I pray that you will not miss that which God has for you. In Jesus name. Amen. I want us to go to the book of Ephesians 4.30. The spirit of the Lord is saying to somebody today. Hallelujah. That he is your guarantee on the day of redemption. So let's make that the theme of today's message. The theme is your guarantee on the day of redemption. Uh, the Bible let us know in Ephesians. Ephesians 4.30, I read, it says, And do not bring sorrow to God's Holy Spirit by the way you live. It says, do not bring sorrow, do not bring grief, do not bring hearts, hallelujah, to God's Holy Spirit by the way you live. It says, remember, He has identified you as His own, guaranteeing that you will be saved on the day of redemption so the scripture hallelujah is saying that you should know by your lifestyle by the way you live by the way you talk by the way you think by the way you act it's saying be careful not to bring sorrow to the Holy Spirit. Some translation says, do not grieve the Holy Spirit. Do not hurt the Holy Spirit. Do not bring pains to the Holy Spirit by your lifestyle, by the way you live. And it says, do not forget. Remember that God has identified you as his own and he has guaranteed you, hallelujah. He has guaranteed you that you will be saved on the day of redemption he has guaranteed you with his holy spirit that he has put on you my god hallelujah this is heavy for someone but listen god is going to help us to break down the scripture as you remain with me as you just give me that 25 minutes of your time and pay attention to this because i believe that this word is going to take somebody today from where you are to where you ought to be in christ hallelujah Thank you, Heavenly Father. Just breathe upon your word, Lord, and help me to say this, not the way I want to say it, but the way you want me to say it, Holy Spirit, in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. It says, remember that God has identified you as his own, guaranteed that you will be saved on the day of redemption. Hallelujah. I always tell people that there is the day of salvation and there is the day of redemption. The day of salvation is different from the day of redemption. The day of salvation is the day that you receive that miraculous birth. The day you got born again and say from today, Jesus, come into my heart, become my Lord and Savior. That day, the salvation of the Lord visited you. But listen, there is a day of redemption. The day of redemption, after the miracle of the new birth hallelujah your destiny is in your hands god allowed you he allows you to walk the journey of faith everybody every individual every child of god who has given their life to christ they are on a journey after you give your life to christ you are on a journey hallelujah and i pray for everyone watching me right now that in this journey god will empower you and help you to travel the narrow road because the wide road is so much so many are walking on the wide road but God wants you to travel on the narrow road he says only a few people go in that path hallelujah
here because it requires you to make choices that do no longer feed yourself your flesh your old man it requires you to make choices hallelujah as led by the spirit of god and not so many people wants to travel that way hallelujah because they find it too hard for them may that not be your portion in the name of jesus may god give you the ability to walk with him to serve him to worship him in spirit and in truth to travel the narrow road and get to the finish line in jesus name amen hallelujah i want to tell you that grieving the holy spirit reflects a very serious offense if you look at isaiah 63 10 it presents to us an account where the people rebelled against god and they grieved the holy spirit of god hallelujah and this led to their rejection they were rejected by god because they rebelled against god and they were rejected by god god was angry with them i'll read it quickly it says yet they rebelled and grieved his holy spirit so he turned against them and became their enemy and he himself fought against them they became god's enemies and even god himself fought against them because god was angry with them hallelujah it is a very serious offense to grieve the holy spirit of god God is the enemy of the people who walk against his will, who walk against his work. Hallelujah. Israel was the work of God to bring the Savior, our Lord Jesus Christ, to all men into the world. But because of their rebellion, they walked against God's plan. Hallelujah. They grieved the spirit of God. Hallelujah. And God started to walk against them. Instead of walking with them, God started to walk against them. Hallelujah. God started to discipline them in order to preserve a remnant, to preserve a few for himself. Hallelujah. That would remain in the land until the coming of the Messiah until the coming of our precious Lord Jesus. If you go read the story in Isaiah, you will know what I'm talking about. Hallelujah. How the people, you know, how they rebelled against God and God was angry with them. Hallelujah. So here in the scriptures in Ephesians um, chapter 4, the apostle Paul was talking, he was warning this church in Ephesus and he told them that they are sinned would grieve the Holy Spirit by whom they are sealed for the day of redemption. This church in Ephesus, they have given their life to Christ. Hallelujah. And the Apostle Paul was warning them that giving your life to Christ does not guarantee that you will go to heaven. It does not guarantee that on the day of redemption you will be redeemed. Hallelujah. He told them now that you have given your life to Christ, there are certain ways you're supposed to live. You're supposed to do away with the old lifestyle, the old nature, the old man, and put on the new man which is your new nature in Christ the new nature the nature of righteousness that God Christ gave to you now that you've given your life to Christ he was telling them be careful the way you live the way you talk the way you think the way you act be careful for the lifestyle the way you're living why so that you do not bring grief you do not bring sorrow to the spirit of the Lord and he let them know because the Holy Spirit of God is the guarantee that you have is the seal upon you hallelujah on the day of redemption is the one that identifies you as god's own on the day of redemption so today this scripture is also talking to us hallelujah he's also telling us warning us that our sinful lifestyle can grieve the holy spirit by whom we are sealed hallelujah for the day of redemption the one that identifies us as God's own on the day of redemption. Imagine someone giving their life to Christ and the spirit of Christ now coming to live in that person. Imagine the person going back to sin and living sinful lifestyle and they grieve the Holy Spirit and the spirit of the Lord depart from that person and the person still goes to church, still functioning in department and still attending fasting and prayer and Bible studies and all services but their lifestyle hallelujah does not you know it does not represent that they really belong to god they live in sin 
hallelujah they still fornicate they still commit adultery some of them still watch pornography some are still in involved in masturbation and they carry their bibles and go to church hallelujah listen living in sin grieves the holy spirit of god and when the spirit of god departs from the person the apostle here is warning the christians and reminding us that listen it is the holy spirit of god that is the seal upon you that identifies you as god's own on the day of redemption imagine the day of redemption comes when jesus comes in his glory to judge the world hallelujah and then he does not find the holy spirit in that brother or in that sister he's going to say you do not belong to me because god says in romans that anyone that does not have my spirit does not belong to me at all i pray for everyone watching me right now that god will give you the grace to serve him faithfully to live a life that is pure and holy to live in such a way that you do not bring sorrow to the spirit of the lord and i pray that the spirit of the lord will not depart from you in jesus name amen if you know how powerful that that prayer is you will shout a very loud amen because praying for you that the spirit of the lord should not depart from you hallelujah is the most powerful prayer that any anyone can pray for me because some of us think that when we come before God and we just ask him for the material things that we need for job for for fruit of the womb for for spouse for financial breakthrough for business you know all of these lists all of these endless lists some people that is the kind of prayers that they want to scream amen but listen the Bible says what shall it profit a man if he gains the whole world but lose his own soul the prayer that any anybody can pray for you the best prayer that anybody can pray for you is to pray for the salvation of your soul hallelujah is to pray for the salvation of your soul amen thank you jesus the holy spirit who is the holy spirit the holy spirit is god he is a member of the godhead hallelujah he is god the father god the son god the holy spirit hallelujah he is the mysterious third person of the trinity through whom god acts through whom god reveals his will through whom god empowers individuals through whom god discloses and still disclose his personality his ways his power his glory his presence both in the old testament and in the new testament and also with us today it is through the holy spirit that god reveals himself to us that he makes himself known to us that he manifests his power to the world hallelujah the father the son and the holy spirit they interconnect they coexist hallelujah they co indwells the believer when you accept the lord jesus christ to come into your heart and you are now a child of god god the father comes to live in you jesus christ comes to live in you the holy spirit comes to live in you in john 15 jesus says abide in me and i in you the spirit of christ comes to live in you hallelujah so he, the three of them together they coexist and they co indwells the believer hallelujah the holy spirit is grieved by the practices of the old man such as lying if you read before the ephesians 4 30 it talks about the things here that people shouldn't do it says do not tell lies hallelujah the holy spirit can be grieved by anger by lying by anger by stealing by using foul language hallelujah the holy spirit can be grieved by all these things by greed by cheating by ignoring him by not listening to him by listening to your flesh your old man instead of listening to his voice the holy spirit can be grieved by all these things by indulging in fornication in adultery in drugs hallelujah the holy spirit can be grieved by by keeping malice maligning other people hallelujah he can be grieved by all these things i cannot serve god without the holy spirit of god i believe that the greatest possession that i have or and and shall ever have is the spirit of god i repeat that again the greatest possession that i have and will ever have is the spirit of god i don't know what else i would be seeking for without the holy spirit of god living in me because without the spirit of god i cannot serve god i cannot worship god 
I cannot live a holy life. I cannot live a life that is pleasing to God without the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit is more real than our spouse. It's more real than what you can see or feel. He's more real than the air we breathe. Hallelujah. He is the Spirit of the Almighty God. Karabo Shindarabaya. Holy Spirit, I pray for everyone watching me right now that you help them to know you in Jesus' name. Help them to know you in such a way that they have never known you before. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Amen. The Holy Spirit within us is a guarantee that we belong to God. What does, what, do, what does this scripture mean when it says the Holy Spirit is the seal? Hallelujah. Guaranteeing that you will be saved on the day of redemption. When you have a special merchandise or a document, maybe a letter, you put a sign on it. When you put a sign on it, you are attesting. You are attesting that no one has tampered with the seal on the merchandise or the document hallelujah it's like a sign of ownership that this one belongs to this person and nobody has opened it nobody has tampered with this document or with the merchandise these believers in ephesus they must preserve their attestation for the day when redemption would be complete the day the lord will judge the world and vindicate his people the apostle paul was warning them he said you must preserve the attestation that is on you the signature that is on you that you belong to God you must preserve it you must not let unholy life and reckless living take that attestation take that seal away because if there is no seal on you to identify you that you belong to God on the day of redemption then you do not belong to Christ so he was warning them and he's also warning us as well the seals were a mark of ownership a number of people placed the imprint of their seal on virtually everything they possess like this is mine they place a seal on it to know that this is mine i possess this one if you look at ezekiel 9 3 to 4 god instructed one of his servants to place a mark on the foreheads of the people who protested the taboos done in their midst the reason was to protect them from God's wrath in judgment since they were his property. He said, place a mark on them in Ezekiel chapter 9 from 3 to 4. Hallelujah. There is a good possibility of losing one's salvation if one commits the unpardonable sin of grieving the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. The Holy Spirit is the one. He's the one who is the actor. He's the one who brands you and I as belonging to God, as a disciple of Jesus Christ. The Spirit seals God's covenantal relationship between God and His people. It seals the relationship. It marks us with mark of ownership that this one now belongs to Christ. That is when you give your life to Christ. But the mistake that most people make is they go back to their sinful lifestyle. They go back to their reckless living. Most people have lost the Holy Spirit. They've lost that touch, that relationship with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit has have departed from them. But they carry their big bible and go in and out of church i keep telling people that you all you need to cry out and say holy spirit have mercy on me possess me once again come into my heart live in me teach me how to serve god help me to serve god help me to live a holy life that should be the cry of every believer even david knew what it means not to have the spirit of god when he committed sin hallelujah of adultery he cried out to the lord he said please take not your spirit away from me take not your holy spirit away from me he knew he would be nothing without the holy spirit of god he wasn't crying to god for the crown he wasn't crying to god for any other thing but he said do not take your holy spirit away from me how many of us still have the holy spirit of god how many of us are serving god in spirit and in truth how many of us are living a holy life? Hallelujah. The Holy Spirit has feelings and can be grieved. As I round up, I want to share with you quickly. Hallelujah. What, what are the ways to avoid grieving the Holy Spirit? Number one, you can avoid grieving the Holy Spirit by first of all surrendering all to Him. Surrendering to Him and then asking Him to help you to live a life that is pleasing to Him. I always tell people you cannot serve God by yourself. You cannot say I'm going to stop committing sin by yourself. As you make up your mind, 
mind to do it. You must lie down flat and surrender and say, Holy Spirit, I acknowledge that I cannot do this by myself. Help me to live a life that is pleasing to you. And when you make that commitment with him as he begins to walk with you, do not look back. Yield to his voice. Hallelujah. Number two, develop rich relationship with him. How do you develop rich relationship with the Holy Spirit? Communicating with him. Communication is very important in every relationship. Talk to him as a friend. He is there with you. He's not a stranger to you. Talk to him the way you would talk to a best friend. Communicate with him. Spend time worshiping him. Spend time talking to him. During my daily activities, sometimes I just pause. I just pause. Even if it's just for five seconds, I just pause and say, Holy Spirit, I love you. Every activity I do during the day, when I finish meetings with people, I say, Holy Spirit, that was a great meeting. I wouldn't have been able to do it without you. Thank you for your help. I just talk to him all through my day. I'm in the kitchen. I'm cooking. I am worshiping him. I am saying, Holy Spirit, I thank you for all that I have achieved already today because without you, I couldn't have done any of them. Holy Spirit, give me strength and grace to make this food. So, and also help me to go study my Bible before I sleep. Like I talk to him all through my day. He is my best friend. I am in constant communication with him. I always offer him thanks. I always tell him I love him. Holy Spirit has feelings. If the Bible is saying, grieve not the Holy Spirit, somebody that has feelings can be grieved. The same person that has feelings can also feel loved and hear you when you speak. Hallelujah. Number three, you can avoid grieving the Holy Spirit by refusing to listen to your old man, which is your flesh. The things you used to do before, you must say, I cannot do them anymore. When that thought comes into your mind, when you are alone and the thought comes into your mind to masturbate, you say, I cannot do that anymore. I am not a child of God. You must learn to listen to what the Spirit is saying to you and shut your ears and do not listen to your old nature to your old man when those friends call you and say let's go clubbing let's go to the bar let's go and drink let's go and have fun you tell them i do not do those things anymore i am now a child of god i need to live an holy life I do not want to grieve the Holy Spirit. To grieve the Holy Spirit of God is to lose the seal of redemption. The Holy Spirit within every believer is a guarantee that they belong to God. The Holy Spirit is like a down payment, a deposit, a validating signature on the contract that a believer will be redeemed on the day of redemption. The presence of the Holy Spirit in a believer demonstrates the genuineness of the faith proves that a believer belongs to God and secures eternal life for that believer. I want to pray for everyone watching me right now. If you've not given your life to Christ, say, Lord Jesus, have mercy on me. Forgive me of every known and unknown sin. Come into my heart and be my Lord and Savior. I believe that you are the Son of God. Thank you for forgiving me. I am now born again in Jesus' name. Amen. And I just pray now for everybody under the sound of my voice. Holy spirit the ones that have grieved you i join my faith to them oh lord on their behalf i want you to say holy spirit i am sorry for all the terrible things i have done i am sorry that i have grieved you have mercy on me and fill me afresh today oh father i pray for your people that you give them a fresh infilling of your holy spirit this moment in jesus name we pray father give them the grace to walk with you holy spirit possess them completely completely help them to live a life that is pleasing to you help them not to grieve you in jesus name we pray amen god bless you thank you for being a part of this program join us same time next week for another fresh episode